Sony users, whether you're shooting stills, video, or hybrid work, you guys are spoiled for choice. The a7 IV for general all-around shooting, a7S III for higher-end video work, although it's a little outdated now, the a7C II for compact cinema work with more up-to-date specs in some ways, the A1, an absolute powerhouse, a combination of high res and high speed. This thing is just as capable on Safari as it is in studio. Or Sony's real studio camera, the A7R5, high resolution, bit slower, but great thing about all of them, they really do walk that line between stills and video with more of a focus here or there on one thing or the other. Plus, there's the new guy, which has literally, in the last 10 minutes, arrived at my door. Shout out to b &H Photo for getting one out to me. The new A9 III. Gosh, there are a lot of people excited about this camera, even people who are generally past gas and aren't always upgrading. What this guy's bringing to the table with the new global shutter, no other camera in this point in the market has something like this. I can see why sports shooters in particular are so excited about this guy. Um, in this video, I literally, I think I'm the only YouTuber that hasn't already had time with it, so I'm literally unboxing it for the first time right now. Um, in this video, I'm planning to do the unboxing and then do a buffer test for you. I saw a post online, I think it was Sony Alpha Rumors sharing a test someone did. I guess it had to be a joke or a troll showing how long it takes to clear the buffer using a really old fashioned SD card. But it did come to mind because I was recently testing another camera. You'll see details on that one later. Um, and, you know, depending on what media type you're using, as cameras get faster or higher resolution, there is the issue of how long is it going to take to clear the buffer if it's locking you out from making adjustments for your next shot. So I'm going to shoot not using troll cards. I'll be using Sony's top of the line uh, class 10 300 megabyte per second cards and for SD and for CF Express A Pro Grade Cobalt 160 gigabyte top speed cards. I'll run each of the different formats, let you know how many shots they got off before it locked up, as well as how long it actually took to clear the buffer to be able to then go into the menus and everything. Before we do the buffer test, I am planning, as I said, to do a full review on this guy. It's going to be during my time in Japan. So please let me know what you would like to see in that review. I'm gonna be filming it over the next couple of weeks. If you're in Tokyo, see details below. I'm going to be holding a photo walk whilst I'm over there. I also have my Iceland tour coming up, a Bhutan tour later in the year, and I have sales up for Valentine's Day and Lunar New Year at the moment. You can see details of all of that below. Um, as I said, big thanks to B&H Photo. I just want to give them a proper shout out. Um, they've been so supportive since I've moved to Hong Kong and getting access to cameras has been more difficult and to be able to get one of these, you know, still a couple of months later than I would have liked if it were coming from official sources, but I really appreciate them getting this out to me as quickly as they could. If you're looking to get a Sony or any other brand or a lens or accessories, they sell everything that you could think of, check out Payboo, their in-store payment card that's available exclusively at B&H Photo it instantly credits you back the amount of state sales tax on your order, which depending on what you're buying can save you hundreds or even thousands of dollars. Why pay more when you can get the exact same product with great service and fast delivery? You can see how quickly I got this guy even across the world and save the sales tax. Check it out, details below. Now, I don't know if I can even be patient enough to charge a battery. Let's grab a battery out of one of these cameras and run some tests. One 
eternity later. Okay, so that was actually a really interesting series of tests. I first tested it with the Sigma 85 and with no mechanical shutter and just having the brrr, it can be kind of hard to tell from the sound if you're shooting 15, 20, 50, 100 frames a second. It's just a whir of burrs. I did the test and in all the right settings, it could only get off about 24, 25 frames per second only. I mean, that's mind bending already, but it's also only 20% uh, of what the camera is capable of. So I checked and the 24 to 70 G2 and the 70 to 200 are both compatible with the 120 frames a second. I updated the firmware on each of those and then did the tests again. It seemed like the 24 to 70 was the faster of the two. I could get the most shots off. And then we ran through and did all of the tests. Now I will put the table on screen here for you, but I'll also make it available to download over at my website. And let me know if you wanna see a CF Express A testing guide. I have one for CF Express B where I've tested dozens of different cards and tell you which are the fastest cards. Basically on this, it makes a huge difference. I have friends who are Sony shooters who have still avoided CFA and because they have so many SDs and the CFA is so much more expensive. But I will say, if you wanna use the fastest frames per second of this camera, you don't have to, but a lot of you are going to want to upgrade to CFA. It may be finally the time. So here's the test that I did. I did uncompressed raw, lossless compressed raw, large and compressed raw as well as jpeg extra fine so i did that just to cfa and just to sd each time testing how many shots we get off and how long it took to clear the buffer then i did raw uncompressed and jpeg extra fine splitting them between the two cards raw obviously to the cfa jpeg to the sd and then i did top quality RAW and JPEG just to the CFA and just to the SD card. Now, I don't know if you wanna sit through me reading out all of these results, but I'll try to do it quickly. Let's start out with the ProGrade Cobalt 160, which is just about the fastest CFA on the market. Um, uncompressed RAW, we got off 106 files and it took 8.1 seconds to write them. Lossless Compressed Large, it got off 106 files and it took 5.5 seconds. Compressed raw, it got off 201 and took 9.8. Uh, JPEG extra fine, it got 206 and took 9.6. So you can see compressed raw and large JPEG extra fine, it's not a whole difference. Uh, then doing both raw and JPEG just to the CFA, it got 104 shots off and took 10.1 seconds. Now, just keep in mind, we're talking about 120 frames per second. So getting off 104 frames means it shot for less than a second and then it took 10 seconds to write it. I'm not throwing shade at this camera. I think nothing else on the market can do it. It's pioneering. It's going to change how the landscape of cameras in the sports realm certainly look over the next five to 10 years. And the feedback I have is the same I would have for all of these cameras, including my Z9 and my Z8 and pretty much every camera, is if it's going to be for speed, just spend a little bit of extra money, work out the thermal issues and double the buffer size. Whatever you and the engineers and the marketing teams have agreed on, just double it. And if you can, then again, double the size and double the speed because it really makes a huge difference. You can see that as we go through these numbers, whatever mode we're in, getting to offload to the card hasn't saved a whole lot of time or let us get a whole lot of extra shots. It really comes down to how big and how fast is the buffer at grabbing the data. And then it, you know, it's a second calculation of how long it takes to actually write it out. Writing to just the 300 megabyte per second, this is a class 10, uh, UHS-2, blah, 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 300 megabyte per second Sony G card. Uh, uncompressed RAW, it got 103 shots and it took 22.3 seconds to write. Lossless compressed large, 102 shots, 13.5 seconds. Compressed RAW, 201 and it took 22.8. Uh, JPEG extra fine, 203 and it took 13.1. So you can see on that one, 
the JPEGs actually wrote a whole lot quicker to this relative to the difference between compressed raw and JPEG extra fine on the two different cards. Interesting. Writing raw and JPEG to it, it got off 105 and took 31 seconds to write. Now, doing the test, which a lot of people will be doing, shooting raw to one card, JPEG to the other, it got off 106 files and it took 30.3 seconds to write, which we can tell is probably down to the JPEGs writing to the SD card. So there you go. I don't have two CFAs to test both of them. Um, I don't know that there's much value in testing two SD cards. Um, that's my first little taste of the kind of testing that I wanted to do for this camera. Do let me know what you'd like to see tested in future videos. If you happen to be in the Nikon, Hasselblad or Fuji realms, check out my user guides there. Details are below. You can also see my Tokyo photo walk and the different courses that are on sale right now. Let me know any questions you have and what you'd like to see me test in this guy in the next two weeks. I'll see you soon.